be talking about manifesting the books. Manifesting the books. And you may be asking, where did the books come from? How did the books come about? Jeremiah 23, 18. You can turn to that this morning with your Bibles. Mark it out so you know where we're drawing our, um, our truths from. Jeremiah 23, verse 18. And the Bible says, For who has stood in the council? I've capitalized the word council because it's a word that I'd like to highlight. For who has stood in the council of the Lord and has perceived and shared his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? The word council is an interesting word. The word council simply means a company of persons who sit in session to consult and settle a decision. The Hebrew word for it is the word sword. Where did the book come from? The Bible says that the council of the Lord decided way before time began to create human beings in his image and in his likeness and help them assigned specific assignments to translate heaven right here on earth. You follow? I hope that is clear. Genesis 1.26 confirms this as well. Genesis 1.26 says, the Godhead decided and had a council about creating and forming men. The Bible says, let us make men in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every creeping thing on the ground and even the cattle on the field. Now, to really understand the word council, or the council of the Lord, we looked into Daniel, and Daniel saw in a vision thrones moved about surrounding the ancient of days, or God Almighty, and there are 24 elders that sit around the throne of the Almighty, and they contribute to this decision-making process. For us to really understand the counsel of the Lord and the books of heaven, this morning we will look into Paul. Paul's writing to the church in Rome. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. We find that, that Paul had been reveal these mysteries. He said, I've, I've unpacked these mysteries and these mysteries that was hidden in times past to those that were before me has now been revealed to me and I'm now revealing it to you. Interestingly, these mysteries, once they become known, they give you and I the confidence to unburden ourselves from things that weighed us down in the past, accusations that weighed us down in the past, guilty conscience and condemnation that we've been carrying about for so long, so that you and I can realize the responsibility that has been given us to deliver what God purposed for us even before the foundations of the earth. So the Bible says in Romans 8, 29 to 30, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. There you see it again, that the mandate or the priority of God is to transform us from our broken selves 
Calvary was necessary because that's where it all started. The redemption process has to end up with each one of us being transformed in the image of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He might be the firstborn among many brethren. That means you and I are the many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. Praise God. Whom he justified, he also glorified. So in these scriptures, or the scripture that we've just read, Paul lists five steps. And they are on the screen there for you. They are God foreknew, God predestined, God called, God justified, and God glorified. For you and I to operate in the courts of heaven and get what is in heaven translated here on earth, we must understand these five stages. We must understand these five stages. Four new, predestined, called, justified, and glorified.